Smartphones are changing everything and agriculture is no exception. Here today to talk about one great new application for your smartphone in the field, Tom Royer, Extension Entomologist. Tom, let's talk about iWheat.org. Yes, iWheat.org is a uh, platform, almost like a social network kind of thing, uh, focused on wheat and wheat production. And uh, we, we got uh, a grant from the USDA several years ago to develop this platform. And it is designed to be a platform to work with, for producers to use, you know, use as a social network kind of all about wheat, anything about wheat. And one of the things that we're constantly asking um, as we're developing it, uh, we, we show it to producers and say, what do you want for this thing? Mm -hmm. So we're slowly adding things that we know producers and people that are involved in wheat production want so that this is a one-stop place that they can come and get any kind of information they need about wheat. All right, and one of the things, the tools it has right now is a way to sample your fields for some insects. Can you yes, tell us about that? Sure. Um, originally, we developed Glance and Go as a, sim a simpler way to uh, uh, sample for green bugs. iWheat's even made it simpler because it's all on a platform that we can access with our iPhone or, or smartphone, and we can literally go out in the field and sample and punch in the things that we're, as we're finding them, into the iPhone and it will shoot that stuff to a place if we want to share it. It'll shoot that stuff um, to a, a platform and make a map out of, you know, if there's green bugs happening in a certain area, it'll, it'll show, you know, on that map where they are if we choose to uh, sample it. If I want to have my own information, I have something called myiwheat.org that uh, is just the information that I have personally that I keep for myself and I can choose just like you would in Facebook or anything else to share some of it or not share okay. depending on what you want to do. Well let's, let's see how it samples it. Show okay. us the process. All right. It, it works just the same as Glance and Go. Um, I go to a spot in the field and then we'll just walk out here. I'll go to a spot and stop and then I'm required to uh, uh, pull up a tiller and examine it for green bugs and for mummies, okay. uh, the natural enemy. And so I just need to look at it. And if I find a green bug, for example, I can just punch the number where it says aphid and it will turn it green and um, say that you have an aphid. And then when I'm done with this stop, I just punch in continue and go to the next location and sample three more times. So now as we talk about the website, we're talking about green bugs and sampling, but now there are some reports in the news recently about some green bugs out there, maybe in, I guess in West Texas, yes. that are pesticide resistant. Yeah, they, uh, uh, a, a colleague of mine, another extension entomologist, Dr. Ed Bynum, uh, discovered at least six different counties where green bugs that are resistant to chlorpyrifos, which is a commonly used aphicide. Um, it's it's uh, one of the you know main products is Lorsban. It's also known as Lorsban, but there's a lot of other uh, generic compounds that has that active ingredient. This, uh, these green bugs are very resistant, up to 1,500 times res more resistant than the, than the dose um, that you would normally use. And, and so that's of concern because when you have a situation like that, and uh, if you're a producer and you have a green bug problem and you go out and spray your field and you have a failure of control, uh, it's just gonna allow, basically what you've done is taken out any natural enemies that were there which even frees up the green bugs more to be even more uh, able to increase in numbers. Right, now that's, that's in, in Texas there. Are we concerned here in Oklahoma about having that same problem? I, I have not received reports of that and I'm not concerned about it right now, but one thing that uh, I uh, like to stress all the time is I've noticed that we have a tendency now when we're spraying a field for um, weed control or something, to throw in a little insecticide in it, even whether we've scouted that field or decided there's a problem or not. Once you start doing that, that's a really good way to start selecting for uh, pests that are resistant to that particular insecticide. So um, I always like to try and encourage as much as possible, taking advantage of natural enemies that you already have out there and only really using insecticides when you know you need them. Um, it's, it's an easy thing to do to say, gosh, I don't want to spend a little extra money for an extra trip if I have to go out and spray for a green bug problem, but right. dang it, if they're not there, why spray for them? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, good information as always. Tom Royer, Extension Entomologist here at Oklahoma State University. Mm -hmm.